text-to-voice synthesis provided by Vidnami. American Government Basics. January 5, 2021 by Anna Von writes. People are waking up all over this country, and in the process they are discovering things that we encountered, too, often two or three decades ago, and so, we're obliged to research for ourselves. One of those is the difference between state and state. The essential difference from the American perspective is that our states control the national soil jurisdiction, while our states control international and global jurisdictions. From the standpoint of our federal subcontractors, the difference is summed up by the government printing office as, the word, state, stands for a foreign government. As all the federal subcontractors exist in international or global jurisdictions, and our states exist in national jurisdiction, it follows that our states are, indeed, foreign with respect to them foreign in nature and foreign in function. Our founders set the states, apart from the states, on purpose, as a protective measure, so that their own states were the only access that our nation states have to international or global jurisdiction of any kind. Otherwise, foreign powers could rely on local misfortunes and weak politicians to deliver our nation states into their control. This safeguard prevents our nation states from being picked off in a piecemeal fashion by foreign governments, similar to the original colonization process in which Britain owned some colonies and Spain and France and Holland owned others. They could then break apart our states and begin a new process of, in this case, corporate feudalism, on a county by county basis. It must be a great disappointment to the perpetrators to discover that yes, we do know the difference between a state, and a state, and a state of state, and so, are not deceived by their false claims in commerce. We also know our own history, and know that the contracts of foreign territorial and municipal, state of state, organizations pretending to act as our agents without explicit grant of specific delegated power, and also pretending to be trustees of our assets in our purported absence, are null and void. Now that our state assemblies are in session there is no excuse in the wide world for anyone to presume anything about us and our government, or to claim that we are in any way absent or incompetent to conduct our own business. Another basic part of American government is that Americans stand under the Declaration of Independence. From our standpoint, the constitutions are simply vendor contracts. Our American state of state organizations that were members of the original Confederation of States set up the Federal Republic to act as one vendor in receipt of delegated powers. This arrangement fell apart in 1860. Another vendor was the British territorial government, and a third vendor was the Holy Roman Empire. These foreign federal workers were defined as three separate categories of, citizens, United States citizens, U.S. citizens, and municipal citizens of the United States. All of them stand under and owe ultimate allegiance to their specific constitution, because, when and if, their constitution is invalidated, they become, stateless, and can then be, seized upon, as, abandoned chattel adrift at sea. The same is not true of birthright Americans for obvious reasons. Our states are not, and never were, states of states, and we don't stand under any constitution, so none of this nonsense taking place in international or global jurisdiction pertains to us, and it certainly does not pertain to our assets. The U.S. citizens and municipal citizens of the United States are in grave peril, because their corporations are either defunct or on the way to being defunct. This severs their, assumed, contract and leaves them, one, unemployed, and two, without any sovereign political status, and three, no excuse to be here on our shores, as they are no longer providing us with, essential government services. They are, in effect, governmental services providers, without a current contract to serve our government. Mercenaries adrift. They have to reorganize themselves and ask for reinstatement and reaffirmation, or, turn over all the, government, property and assets that they have had control of as a result of their delegated constitutional performance contracts, to us, their employers. It would be like loaning your lawn mower to Joe next door, so that he can mow your lawn, a service for which you loyally pay him. Then Joe next door goes bankrupt and suffers other reversals so that he can no longer mow your lawn. He self-evidently needs to return your lawn mower, so that you or someone else of your choosing can do the job. 
In this case, the guilty corporations need to be dissolved and their debts satisfied without any phony claims against the assets of their employers, and then, the principals responsible need to make amends, and in tandem with these measures, the American employers need to mow their own lawn until other arrangements are made. It's possible that once the cat is out of the bag, and the principals are squarely faced with their malfeasance, the banks and parties responsible will drop all pretense of having any custodial or other interest in ourselves and our property and settle their differences. With reconstruction and restoration of our entire lawful government in place, such a situation could not again transpire. Until then, our states are in session and are competent to conduct our business, and they have every right to do so.